This is the Shock Absorber Netball Academy at intersports.com. In Movement Skills 1, we looked at the basic types of movement in netball. In this guide, we're going to look at how these skills are applied in game situations, in particular when your team has the ball and you need to get free to receive a pass. Let's start with some basic ways to create space and get free. These basic techniques are most often referred to as change of pace and change of direction. Let's look at change of pace first. A straight sprint can be used either from a stationary or rolling start as a way to quickly move away from a defender. It's the momentary advantage that you create that makes the difference. By the time the defender's reacted, you'll be in space and ready to receive a pass. Another technique that has a similar result is a pace change which can be based on acceleration or deceleration. Again, it gives you space quickly, but the defender can react quickly too, so it's not always the best option, especially in tight spaces. A simple direction change can be more deceptive than a pace change and can make you more evasive, especially if a defender is tracking your movement forward or backward. You can develop direction changes to include ways to disguise your intentions too, using a roll, reverse pivot or front or back cut. We'll cover these later in this guide. With all of these basic techniques, you can help your teammate that's holding the ball by signaling your intended movement before you go. You can do this using eye contact or using a hand movement. If the player with the ball knows where you're going to move to, then they can help deceive the defender even more by using a fake or no-look pass. The most effective basic way to get free is to combine pace and direction changes. It makes you more evasive and most defenders will be slower to react to. You can find a number of drills and training ideas to practice direction and pace changes while also working on your ball skills in the drills section of this academy. So that's the basic ways to get free covered. Now let's look at some more advanced techniques that you can use. The hold and lunge can be used when you have clear space behind you or to the side and is used most frequently by attackers in the circle to secure the ball and a chance to shoot. As the name suggests, the hold and lunge technique allows you to hold a position and lunge to receive the ball. The setup position in relation to the defender will vary according to which direction you want to lunge to to receive the ball. With the defender ball side, if you want to receive the pass directly behind the defender, then you'll need to move into a T position with your body side on to the defender's back. From this position you can lunge sideways, keeping the foot closest to the defender grounded and providing a barrier to prevent them moving across. If you're looking to catch the ball to the side of the defender, then you'll need to set up so that your front is facing their back. In this position you can indicate where you want the ball placed without the defender seeing and then lunge left or right to catch the ball. No matter whether you're lunging sideways or backwards, the signal you give to the feeder is critical. If you call out left or right, then the defender will immediately know your intentions. Instead, you'll need to work with the circle feeders, the center, wing attack and goal attack to develop ways to signal where you want the ball placed using eye contact or hand gesture. Even better, the feeder has to read the situation and see where is best to pass to. They actually have a better position to see the options than the attacker, who for example may not see another defender hovering behind the receiver, then just has to adapt to the pass and catch it. Now let's look at some more advanced direction change techniques. The front and back cut combine a pace and direction change to evade a defender, particularly when their head is turned or you have a little clear space between you. It's important to read the play before you make a front or back cut so that you time your movement to run onto a pass and avoid contact with the defender. For a front cut, move to run behind the defender and then as the defender moves into your path to stop your progress, make a short sharp change of direction and accelerate past them, cutting in front to receive the ball down the court. For a back cut, move to run in front of the defender and then as the defender moves into your pathway to stop your progress, complete a short, sharp change of direction and accelerate past them, cutting behind to receive the ball down the court. Next, let's look at a reverse pivot. The reverse pivot is a great way to evade a closed defender that's ball side, where you have room to move left or right. As the name suggests, you pivot sharply inwards on your inside foot so that you rotate round to phase outwards, then sprint out at a flat or 45 degree angle to receive the pass. You pull back the outside shoulder and foot to turn, pivoting on the foot closest to the defender. The first stage of the move is to plant your leading foot wide as a visual cue to wrong foot the defender, and then push off back in the opposite direction. Drive hard with your arms to sprint out and then get your hands up ready to receive the pass. 
Pivot on your outside foot to take the shoulder closest to the defender forwards and away from them. Finally, let's look at the roll. You can use the roll in the same situation as a reverse pivot, when you're positioned behind the defender with space to move left or right. For the roll, you turn on the foot closest to the direction you want to move, turning on your back to the defender, and then continuing through a full rotation to face the pass alongside the defender. Visually, the reverse pivot and the roll look very similar. The main difference is which foot you pivot from. With a roll, you roll away from the defender, pivoting on the foot closest to the direction you're moving towards, whereas a reverse pivot uses the outside foot to deceive the defender before pushing off and moving back in the opposite direction. So that's movement skills too. Let's recap on the key skills we've covered. There are two basic ways to create space and get free from a defender, using a change of pace, a change of direction, or a combination of the two. The hold and lunge technique allows you to hold a position and lunge to receive the ball either to the side or behind a defender. The front and back cut combine a pace and direction change to evade a defender. And finally, the reverse pivot and the roll are great ways to evade a close defender that's ball side, where you have room to move left or right. So now that you've widened your knowledge of ways to get free, why not look in the drills section for a practice drill that you can use to practice your new movement skills. Intersports.com, the home of world-class netball coaching online.